Hi folks, welcome to RJ Impact. Question for you, what do the Winklevoss twins and their crypto company Gemini have in common with the SEC, FTX stroke Sam Bankman Freed, a feud or disagreement being played out in public via social media, the failure and potential bankruptcy of the crypto broker Genesis and a nude model called Emily Ratajowski? Let's find out. The main focus of this video is going to be the Winklevoss twins and their company Gemini and how they are owed a reported $900 million from a company called Genesis and how that might lead to them defaulting on payments due to their own customers. Who are the Winklevoss twins? Larry Summers, president of Harvard when the identical pair were there, called them assholes. They were portrayed in the blockbuster movie The Social Network as brawny buffoons born with many advantages and zero wits. They have been variously called Twinklevoss, Winklevi, the Testosterone Titans and the Pistachio Slingers. We're looking at them now because at one level they're just two of the many many casualties of the crypto crisis that's been rocking the decentralised finance world for the past year and which has seen their fortune cut in half. There's $900 million owing to one of their companies as a result of the FTX collapse last November. That company itself owes its customers about $1 billion which it can't pay back. The FTX collapse sees its former CEO Sam Bankman fried under house arrest awaiting trial which has created an environment where crypto companies are looking to hold their own assets rather than put them at risk by lending them out to others. To add to the list of the twins' problems, they were charged by the CFTC in June last year with the mismanagement of their own crypto firm Gemini. Another charge from the SEC came in January this year. How did this sorry state of affairs arise and what are the Winklevi doing about it? While you chased him through Harvard Square. I chased him? I, I, I saw him and I know he saw me. I went after him and then he disappeared. I don't see this as a university issue. Of course this is a university issue. There's a code of ethics and an honor code, and he violated You them enter into a code of ethics with the university, not with each other. I'm sorry, President Summers, but what you just said makes no sense to me at all. I'm devastated by that. What, what my brother means is if Mark Zuckerberg walked into our dorm room and, and stole our computer, that would be a university I issue. I really don't know. This office doesn't handle petty larceny. This isn't petty larceny. Right. This idea is potentially worth millions of dollars. Millions? Yes. You might just be letting your imaginations run away with you. The Winklevi in a nutshell. Tyler and Cameron Winklevoss first became known for their legal battle with Mark Zuckerberg over the creation of Facebook. This resulted in a settlement in which the Winklevosses received $65 million in cash and stock. They were portrayed in the film about Facebook, the social network, and were both played by the actor Arnie Hammer. They competed at rowing in the Beijing Olympics, getting through the preliminary rounds before crashing out and finishing last in the final. With their settlement, they bought an $80 million mansion, a penthouse in New York, they dated models and hung out with the New York elite. They lived what you might call the high life. The Pistachio Singers moniker came about when in 2011 the twins appeared on television to advertise a brand of pistachio nuts. Hey, that's a good idea. What? Cracking it like that. Could be huge. Think someone will steal it? The Winklevoss twins. Who do that? Do it cautiously. They became the first Bitcoin billionaires. They'd invested $11 million in the cryptocurrency in 2013 at what is thought to be around $10 per Bitcoin, which was worth $1 billion by 2017. They own an estimated 70,000 Bitcoins or approximately 1% of all Bitcoins in existence. A number of startups and investments came and went, including SumZero, a social network firm for investors, Huckster, a fashion startup, and Treats magazine. These pretty much all failed, and they were no strangers to litigation. For example, in 2018, the duo launched a lawsuit against the owner and publisher of Treats magazine claiming he frittered away part of their $1.3 million investment. Treats is an erotica and fine arts magazine. It featured Emily Ratajowski in her first nude pictorial and has included raunchy photos of an array of other stars. They launched the band Mars Junction and played their first show in Brooklyn in 2021. This was a cover band playing music by the likes of Fall Out Boy, Blink-182, U2, Nirvana, Kings of Leon and The Killers. 
The consensus about the band, as far as I can tell, was embarrassing. They then launched their own cryptocurrency exchange, Gemini, trading in Bitcoin and Ethereum. In 2020, the Winklevoss twins sued Charlie Shrem, an early Bitcoin entrepreneur, accusing him of using $26 million worth of Bitcoins they had given him for safekeeping. Shrem was sentenced to two years at one point for trading Bitcoin used in drug dealing and money laundering transactions. In 2021, they started investing in NFTs, non-fungible tokens, which is a new form of digital asset, and they also launched their own NFT marketplace called Nifty Gateway. Okay, so that, which is very much a fast-track summary of their highs and lows over the last 20 years, brings us more or less up to date. Let's take a deeper look at the main focus of this video and what has transpired in the last couple of years. In May 2022, as digital currencies plunged in value over fears for the wider global economy, they saw billions wiped off their own fortune, from around $4.5 billion to $2.2 billion. The US CFTC filed a federal lawsuit in New York in June in 2022, accusing Gemini of making false and misleading statements about Bitcoin futures, and it's seeking civil fines and other remedies. Then the FTX monumental crash happened in November 2022, they have been caught up in the domino effect following its demise, which has seen around a million FTX creditors looking for their assets. The twins are in the red as a knock-on effect from this by around $900 million. The knock-on effect was caused when another crypto broker Genesis saw billions evaporate from its own valuation following the FTX crash. Before we continue the saga, a quick note on Gemini and Genesis. Gemini it was founded in 2014, originally to facilitate storage of Bitcoin in a secure environment. It was the first licensed Ethereum exchange in the US. It expanded to offer trading for a number of other crypto assets. These assets included things like crypto credit cards, NFTs and the Gemini Earn program, of which we'll hear more shortly. They launched their own stablecoin, GUSD, Gemini Dollar. In June 2022, the CFTC, then in January 2023, the SEC, both filed suits against it. The company, feeling some pain, laid off around 10% of its workforce, which they called a contraction phase, which to me makes it sound like some kind of planned process as part of a bigger plan they have. I'd rephrase that as something like, and not doing so well. They coined another phrase, if you'll excuse the pun coin, as they called it the crypto winter. They made big loans to Genesis, the importance of which will become all too clear. Genesis, just a couple of words on Genesis. It's a subsidiary of DCG, the digital currency group, which is formed in 2015 by Barry Silbert. It does crypto lending and other asset custody for mainly large and institutional clients only. Some of its lendings to Babel Finance and Three Arrows Capital have soured recently, leaving it in somewhat of a difficult position financially. It was another one of those companies that was caught up and exposed to the FTX collapse. So while we're just finishing this summary of the two companies, Genesis was lent nearly $1 billion by Gemini, and it's now said it doesn't have the funds to make the repayment, citing unprecedented market turmoil stemming from the collapse, also known as, we just haven't got the money. So this happened because, according to Genesis now, the company has about 2.8 billion in active loans due to it, and it's unable to be helped by its parent company, DCG, which has troubles of its own, being in debt to the tune of some $2 billion. Well, of that $2 billion, 1.7 billion of it is owed to, yes, you guessed it, Genesis. Following the FTX collapse, Genesis had its own customers requesting their assets back in a run, but it stopped withdrawals on November the 16th. It had tweeted a week earlier that it had lost $175 million locked up in FTX. Another regulatory lawsuit. I'll say a quick word about this because it relates to the Gemini Earn program, which Gemini and Genesis operated together. So US regulators filed a lawsuit against Genesis and Gemini for allegedly illegally raising more than $3 billion through Gemini Earn. And that's a program that allowed investors to earn money by lending out their crypto assets. The SEC claimed that the Earn program 
was an unregistered security. Launched in 2021, it was promoted by both Gemini and Genesis and promised returns on customers' cryptocurrency assets in exchange for the right to lend their tokens out. And they paid generous interest rates, about 7.4%. They say about it, that's more than 100 times the national US average, and it was boasted of as being a sure bet. This then is at the heart of the potential loss to the twins of $900 million because Gemini itself had lent Genesis around $1 billion, which is now frozen. In a series of tweets, Tyler Winklevoss slammed the lawsuit and said Gemini would defend itself in the case. He called it a manufactured parking ticket. The twins themselves have faced their own lawsuit from their own clients, claiming that they were duped by the duo. Public spat. All of this has become a public spat. So in public accusations and responses, the twins and Genesis founder Barry Silbert have been slinging blame and counterblame at each other. The nuances of some of the tweets, retweets and open letters etc. are a bit intricate, so I'll highlight the gist of a few and you can get the feel for what's going on. The twins blame Barry Silbert for the problems that they face with Gemini and the $900 million they have had frozen from Gemini. Cameron Winklevoss said DCG owed Genesis $1.7 billion and it should be paid so Genesis itself could repay its creditors, including the twins of course. Silbert countered and said that DCG did not borrow the money from Genesis. Silbert said that it had sent Genesis and yours, i.e. Cameron's advisors, a proposal but hadn't heard back. There was a somewhat feisty response from Cameron. There you go again, stop trying to pretend that you and DCG are innocent bystanders and had nothing to do with creating this mess. It's completely disingenuous. So how does DCG owe Genesis $1.7 billion if it didn't borrow the money? Oh right, that's promissory note, Cameron wrote implying that Genesis did loan DCG the funds. An open letter was sent accusing Barry of bad faith stall tactics and saying, your behavior is not only completely unacceptable, it is unconscionable. The idea in your head is pure fantasy. This mess is entirely of your own making. I'll give you a hint at some of the complexities because I'll read out a sentence and see what you make of it. It's about what the twins are saying Barry did with Gemini's money to fuel greedy share buybacks, illiquid venture investments, and kamikaze grayscale NAV trades that ballooned in the fee-generating AUM of your trust, all at the expense of creditors and all for your own personal gain. It is now time for you to take responsibility for this and do the right thing. Make of it what you will. What's now? Genesis previously told clients that due to its FTX exposure, it could take weeks to find a potential way forward and that bankruptcy is a distinct possibility. Well, weeks have already passed and it appears Genesis has no way forward. The twins themselves have not been active publicly since Tyler last tweeted on January the 12th. News flash. In breaking news, just as I'm concluding this, Genesis announced on Thursday 19th of January 2023 that it was filing for bankruptcy. This had been widely expected. Genesis' own creditors have filed lawsuits against Barry Silbert and DCG. Genesis is seeking to void the debt due to Gemini, which will leave Gemini and the twins, who have to account to their own creditors, with a loss of around $800 million according to the bankruptcy papers. So there you go, events are moving fast. So that brings us up to date within the last week anyway. In all my research on this, I think there's a missing element which may only be uncovered as the SEC and the CFTC court cases evolve. You need to remember that it was both Gemini and Genesis that promoted the earned scheme that leaves the twins owing their clients around $900 million. So if the twins were promoting a scheme that was not legally sound, then they themselves could be culpable for their clients' losses as well as fines and penalties. Is this public attack on Silbert stroke Genesis really a way to cast blame in their direction? In other words, diversionary activity from their own responsibilities. I think we all need to be clear, it is the twins stroke Gemini that raised the money from their clients and they were responsible for that. If the twins stroke Gemini then lent the money to Genesis, then they're responsible for that too. 
So yes, the failure of that loan is the cause of Gemini not being able to repay its clients. But the Winklevi cannot just take themselves out of the middle. They have to bear responsibility for it. We wait and see what happens next. Well, I hope you found this update informative and enlightening. There seems to be at least another chapter or two to go in this story. We'll follow the case along and provide updates as needs be. If you subscribe to the channel, then that would be very much appreciated by the narrator. He salutes you if you do. Bye for now.